so uh, thank you so much uh, firstly the organizers for giving me this uh, opportunity this platform to share some of the ideas and thank you all for uh, for being here and uh, uh, what i'm going to take the next 13 14 minutes is talk about uh, you know uh, health and uh, and food and nutrition so food is very fundamental to us right so how do the two connect for uh, together yeah and uh, uh, you know uh, for the last century or so our uh, focus on health has largely been on the curative aspects of health treatment of diseases we call right and while that has been uh, of great success right and has we've, we've learned a lot we've treated a lot of diseases of late we've realized that we are beginning to fail on many fronts with that curative approach yeah uh, first it is extremely expensive and to deliver good healthcare to everybody right we need to look at very uh, different type of solutions and secondly when you look at things like metabolic health you know uh, diabetes uh, cardiovascular health you look at brain health uh, we are struggling with our conventional curative approaches to deliver solutions yeah uh, even uh, things like iron deficiency anemia you know, uh, it's almost a century of efforts and uh, we still uh, do not have uh, successful approaches to it short time yes we've been able to address but over a long time of human life we've not been able to address that so what we are trying to look at is there there is a focus globally which is now moving towards food first solutions right which put balance the curative complemented with the preventive aspects yeah as well so when we look at food first solutions uh there are three large theories right to how to look at food for solutions the first of course is the most prevalent one uh the classical food chemistry uh sorry uh yeah which which talks about uh, which talks about simply put classical food chemistry is what we are studying in our uh, in our schools and colleges and it says that hey food chemistry should reflect body chemistry right and that's where all the rdas etc that's the beginning of everything right uh, of late uh, since 2002 uh, the gut theory or the food and microbiome theory has also started becoming extremely popular which is saying hi uh, the classical food seems to focus on the 20000 genes that we have but hey, there are 2 million genes that are there in our microbes so we need to pay attention in fact that should be the first that we should pay attention to so feed our gut right should be fundamental and they'll build the classical uh, theories on top of it layer the classical theories on top of it the third one that we feel that we put at the foundation we feel there is a merit in both classical and food microbiome but we see at the foundation we probably need to put ayur ahar the ayurvedic principles dietary principles the ayurveda culinary principles right why uh because if we really want a preventive approach and maybe even a curative approach yeah coming from food food first solution we have to go personalized yeah the population level guidances that we have 2000 calories 55% coming from carbohydrates cannot yeah uh, uh deliver what we wish to from food first solutions right so why personalized right uh i think uh, again over the last two decades or so Uh, while we had intuitively known that all of us are different from each other i look left i look right i look different from everybody else but uh, over the last 20 years we've been beginning to quantify right ourselves and see how we are different uh, of course most uh, popular uh, oops uh, i think there is no pointer huh? so of course uh, uh, we look at uh, this is point or this also oh, oh yeah okay yeah so yeah so uh, uh, we all know that our genotype is different from each other 2002 we managed to read our genotype you know we are very different from each other based on our genotype uh, over, since then we realized that our microbiomes are also different in fact we are more diverse in our microbiomes rob specter's work from uk uh, which says with study on twins which found out that hey while huge similarity in the genotype among twins but the microbiome are extremely different only 30% similarity there we know from uh, homeostasis with these wearable devices that each one of us responses our trends in heartbeat our trends in temperature are extremely different from each other if i woke out from a cold environment to a warm environment right how my circulation changes will be very different from yours to come back to you know a stable body. and uh, 
with the uh, continuous glucose monitoring units, lipid profile measurements, inflammation measurements, post eating we also understand and can quantify our metabolic responses to food. Right? So we are hugely different from each other and therefore personalization, the, uh, the concept that personalization of food is going to be essential if you want it to be a effective preventive and curative solution. Right? And, uh, and therefore, Ayurveda needs to be at the foundation of this food revolution, food first solution, because Ayurveda is all built on personalization, right? Personalization through the algorithms of Prakriti and Dosha, right? Uh, we are each very have a distinct Prakriti uh, mapped onto food properties, characteristics, the Doshic properties of food, and therefore we have a algorithm, a matching algorithm to the two. Uh, we have uh, established links of our phenotypes to, oh, if you look at Sama Dosha, Sama Agni, Sama Dhatu, Malakriya, Prasanatma, Indriya, Mana and so on, right? Uh, there are concepts of balances which are based on our individual Prakritis, right? And so therefore, starting here as the foundation uh, and coupling it with the Dravaguna Shastra, the individual the properties of food can yeah, lead to a framework for personalized nutrition. So now how would that operationalize, right? So the next chart attempts to operationalize that through, uh, 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 through the schema. This is where at the heart of this, of course, is the, uh, uh, is the uh, individual, right? And uh, the individual is characterized by the body type, the prakriti, and, uh, uh, and current status, we are eating something and we have a current well-being yeah, uh, which characterizes us. And uh, uh, taking these inputs, so of course, my well-being, uh, I could be something and this is my vikruti right now or my well-being, my health status right now. So there is an error between what I should be and what I could be, right? And similarly, maybe there is something which I should be eating my personalized diet, my ideal diet. But I am eating, this is my real diet, so there is an error. So the whole concept Ayurveda is uh, in a sense that if I can minimize the error in my inputs and have them as close to as my Prakriti dictates, then the error in my health will also be minimal, right? So that's the approach that is uh, there in Ayurveda. Uh, and so what we are trying to say is, could that be now put together into an algorithm which is operationalized by a... Uh, AI or a ML which resides on our watches uh, and can be self-administered therefore, right? And that will be delivered through, of course, what it will require, these algorithms which will help minimize, will, uh, oops, sorry. Yeah. So, yeah, so they can be operationalize, they will require a lot of back-end databases to operationalize the back-end of, of microbiome or food chemistry, but also the, uh, the Ayurveda databases, the Dravaguna properties of foods uh, built on the seasonality algorithms, the, uh, the, uh, the circadian rhythm as we call the sun within and without, right? The Agni inside and the Agni outside. So, the, the seasonality rhythm and the circadian rhythms. And then all the samskara, the food recipes, sensorials, indices, yeah, the anthropometrics, blood chemistry, our postprandial responses. So we put together uh, our body type information, these databases, and our actual health and actual diet and arrive at a personalized diet, right, algorithm. Uh, the key challenge, one of the key challenges to develop such a system, of course, is uh, and to make it a mass personalization, right? There are attempts to personalization which are happening around the world, but I would say almost there are elitist attempts because it will require almost a couple of lakh rupees to start off there. But if you really want to transform and provide a health solution for the masses, we need to get to a personalized tool for the masses and which will require very reliable self-administered softwares for generating our Prakriti, my body typing and my current assessment, a quantified assessment of my health, right? So these are uh, quantified descriptive analysis, almost like QDAs, quantified descriptive assessments of my body type and, uh, uh, and my health uh, which we require. And the foundations of these are present the methodologies, the framework, uh, the questionnaires are there in Ayurveda. For example, Prakriti, oh, there are about 140 or so phenotypic characteristics given 
in uh, Charaka Samhita, which have been clustered together into about 20 gunas, which are further clustered into about three doshas, which then define the prakriti of an individual. Similarly, what we just mentioned on the previous slide, that assessment of health, that is samadosha, samagni, samadhat, and so on, the, the, uh, uh, the framework is there and the questions are also there. So, you could arrive at scoring, quantified scorings of both these by taking this, but what we need to, the challenge is, can we get to a self-administered, something which is, uh, which is uh, no, uh, uh, as good as possible, uh, but not mediated through a Vaidya or an health expert, by, but through uh, self-administration, because that really brings the call. So, we are working on those. We have our first versions ready that we are field testing and validating, and we are on this journey to actually take this forward. So, of course, to the, uh, the other things which are required there are the Ayurveda softwares and databases. Right? Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, we are creating a database in this university where we have looked at about 34 classical texts spanning from about 1500 BCE to about 16th century texts, 34 texts, and mined about 2000 plus recipes from there. Uh, and then uh, look, uh, mind the ingredients from there, and then the rasa panchakas, dosha karmas of those ingredients. Then on to the uh, uh, extending the food composition tables, the 200 or so 180 parameters that uh, NIN has in its food uh, to extend that to all the other ingredients that we have mined. We have now about 1500 ingredients as opposed to 542, which are there in I NIN. And then building the food chemistry properties, the food microbe and bri microbiome interactions, the molecules and the sensory profiles. Because remember, when it comes to food, it's always taste plus health, never health plus taste, right? So we have to focus on sensory properties as well. Uh, and, uh, and the emerging properties, right? The antioxidant indices, the glycemic indices, the ADMA properties, the sensory properties, etc. of these. And along with the algorithms to link these properties, the Ayurveda properties with the science, yeah, modern science uh, properties. So, uh, with, uh, I would like to thank, I think on the first chart, I had uh, uh, the logo of uh, RIST. Uh, RIST is Rural India Supporting Trust, which has given us some seed money to find some, found some of these, uh, to seed some of these ideas and build programs. And then we are on a journey to uh, explore other opportunities to go deeper into this. Uh, sorry, yeah. But yeah, so finally, I think uh, uh, for vision uh, Ayurveda 2047, what we're trying to propose is that, uh, uh, that, that this food concept of preventive health operation, operationalized through our daily food has to be a strong element. Uh, and, and India is poised yeah, to deliver that because of our rich food heritage, uh, which is not just what we eat and the diversity of foods that we eat. But coupled with, uh, 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 with coupled with all the knowledge we have from the health perspective and the personalization perspective from Ayurveda. Now, if you look at modern literature, the focus largely is on what to eat, right? Where if you look at Ayurveda, it is not just what to eat, but how to eat and when to eat, right? Is also in there, and it's when these three things come together is when you have a holistic health solution. So, what to eat, personalized with the prakriti. And then with the Ritu Charya and the Dina Charya into how we put it into our daily lives and it becomes a ritual is what we have to offer for the global. Yeah, is a mass percentage. Thank you.